Hi, I'm Andy Jones, Content Editor for Platt's online education program, Let's Paint. And in this skill builder, I'm going to teach you how to paint a realistic water drop. Painting a water drop is not something that's very difficult to do. You have to paint neatly and carefully because they're very small. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is you don't want to look like your subject matter has broken out into a sweat. Um, a few water drops will be fine. If you get too many water drops, it's just busy and unattractive. So let's talk about the optical illusion that we're actually going to paint. The water drop um, follows the contour of the object that it's on. So make sure that if your object is bulbous and curved, that your water droplet curves in the same shape as your subject matter. The water drops that are trailing down do not close off at the end. There is no ending to the water drop. The side closest to the light source is a gray color. The side of the water drop opposite the light source is the brightest part of the drop and is white. You will also have a glint of white uh, in the larger uh, part of the drop and then perhaps a smaller tiny glint further up the water drop. Opposite the light source you will have a cast shadow. It's important to keep in mind that the cast shadow is slightly darker than the object that the water drop is on. Most of the time that is what we would call a local color. Your dew drop or water drop would not be brown. Just because it's a shadow it wouldn't be brown on every subject that you're painting. So I'm going to move my finished example of a water drop um, out of camera range and then I'm going to paint a giant water drop for you so that you know exactly what the steps are and how to put them together. Okay, so I've got a rather large um, water drop here and you can see that I've lightly sketched the darker side of the water drop. My light source is going to be coming in from this direction so my cast shadow would be over here opposite the light source. To begin I'm going to be using my flat brush that I've side loaded with classic French gray and a small amount of titanium white just to lighten that gray just a little bit. And I will remind you that there is a skill builder video on loading your flat brush so that you can refer back to that if you need a little bit of a refresher course. And I'm going to just start at the top of the water drop and I'm going to slide down the dark side of the water drop making sure that that edge is nice and neat and then pat that color on and stop down at the heaviest part of the water drop. So I'll rinse my brush out, blot the excess moisture out on a blue shop towel and I'm going to side load my flat brush with Folk Art Titanium White and I'm going to need to turn the water drop so that it's convenient for me to paint. So hopefully this won't be jarring in the video. We're just going to turn it around this way. Okay, so then I'm going to pat the color on where it's going to be the brightest and just let it trail off there at the bottom of the water drop. And then I'm just going to pat this color back up the other direction. And I want to make sure that I do not pinch off the top of the water drop. I want to make sure that there is a gap between the dark side and the light side and that you can see some local color in the center of the water drop. All right, looking at the monitor so that I can see exactly what I've painted and I need to add a little bit more white to the water drop so I'm just going to turn this just a little bit more so it's 
a little easier for me to control my paintbrush. And I'm just going to pat a little bit of this light color on right here so that I have a much brighter area at the fattest part of the water drop. Okay, I think that's going to do for what we need to do right now. So I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to load my brush with the color that I'm going to create my cast shadow, which is going to be yellow ochre plus dioxazine violet. And I'm picking up both of those colors on the same half of the brush because I want to make this color just slightly darker than my local color. I don't want a purple shadow and I don't want a shadow that is so dark that it looks harsh. Okay. So now that I've got a nice dark color and my brush is nicely side loaded, I'm going to again rotate the water drop so that it's easy for me to see what I'm doing. And you should do this all the time when you paint. Make sure that you're turning your surface so that it's comfortable for you to work on it. And I'm going to basically start right next to my water drop and apply this cast shadow and let it be fatter where the drop is wider and trail off where the drop is thinner. And I can come back and I can add to the cast shadow if I need to make it darker or reshape the water drop. All these things you can do but you've got to pay attention to what you're actually putting on the surface. So I'm just going to pat and soften that color out a little bit. And just so you know, this should be perfectly smooth and have a beautiful curve edge to it because a drop of water would always have a beautiful smooth edge to it. So now I'm going to put a glint onto the water drop and I'm using Folk Art Titanium White and a liner brush and I'm going to thin the paint to a nice flowing consistency. You want this paint to have a little bit of body to it. And I'm going to apply the glint opposite the bulbous part of the water drop. And then I could put another little bit of a glint that's trailing up the drop if need be probably wouldn't add that, well, probably wouldn't leave that second little droplet there. That just looks too much to me. So I'm rinsing out my flat brush and I'm just going to come onto the water drop and lightly scrub that, make it finer, and I think that's going to be just fine to leave it like that. All right, so to recap, um, and I'm going to, this is just bothering me too much that that is not um, a nice smooth edge. So I'm just going to move this around so that I can come back and I'm not going to outline this but I am going to use my liner brush just to make certain that that outside edge is perfectly round and smooth. So just very carefully take your time if you need to do this. This is one of those moments where I would tell you you need to mix a little brains with your paint. You have to look at what you're doing and if something looks wrong, then remember it is wrong and you need to change it at that moment because it's not going to fix itself just by you leaving it alone. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with the way this looks and let's get this right reading for you. So you can see how this looks more correct. So to recap this portion, we have um, our light source coming in from this direction. We have our gray on the dark side of the drop. And you might think it's odd that the dark side of the drop is closest to the light source, but the light passes through the water and is caught down here and reflects back much brighter than where it actually enters into the drop of water. 
So we've got our brightest area here and then our cast shadow which is widest at the fattest part of the water drop. So now that you've seen how it's done really large, I'm going to paint one uh, what I would call a normal size and we're going to be doing that on the pair that we did in a previous skill builder lesson. So because my uh, pair is smaller than the large surface that I just worked on, I'm switching to a much smaller brush and once again I'm going to take the classic French gray folk art acrylic color and some titanium white both on the same half of the brush to create a nice gray color and right here I'm going to slide down that side of my water drop and create the shape of a falling drop of water. Then I'm going to shift to titanium white to paint the light side of the water drop, making sure that I have my brush nicely side loaded. And again, we've done a skill builder lesson on how to load your flat brush so you can watch that skill builder if you need to refresh your memory or just watch it again so that you really understand how it's done. So now I'm going to turn the water drop so that it's easier for me to paint. Trying to keep it, there we go. All right, so I'm going to come down, start here at the bottom and make the wider portion of the water drop. Just soften that and then carry this up the light side making sure that the two ends don't meet. All right, if I completely lose uh, the color of my object, I can, uh, this is just to show you how to cheat a tiny bit. I'm gonna take a microscopic amount of yellow ochre on my brush and I'm just going to touch that on to the water drop. Now I've got the yellow back in the center and with my brush side loaded with the white. I'm going to reestablish that brighter side of the water drop. Clean my brush out and I'm going to again use the yellow ochre and the dioxazine violet. When you're painting this, if you were painting this on an apple, you might need to use uh, true burgundy as your shading color. If you're doing something green, you might need like sap green or sap green plus thicket make sure that your shadow color is just darker than the object that the water drop is resting on. So you can see that there's a pretty bright highlight on the pair and then we've got our water drop resting next to it. So our water drop's going to need a nice shadow. So we're going to start and we're going to make sure that we get a nice cast shadow from our water drop. And the brighter your light source, the darker your shadow would be. So just shaping the water drop. And now we're going to finish it off again with a glint of white. So I'm shifting to my liner brush and titanium white that I've thinned down to a flowing consistency with water. And we're going to put the glint on the water drop opposite the cast shadow. Let's turn this again so you can see where we are. Okay. Now here we go, we're going to apply the glint right here and then a little bit of a longer one there. And that is how you paint the illusion of a water drop.